Hello and welcome to another jungle video. And in this one, we are going to be taking a look at how you can take a carry jungler, play it correctly, and then be in a position to 1v9. And by that, I mean, if you have a one and seven lane, you're still able to take over, maybe with a 98% kill participation by around 15 to 20 minutes. That's right, the hyper carry junglers, the ones that need to get fed in order to actually win, the ones that need you to have great jungle knowledge, pathing and execution, are the most difficult to carry within solo queue. While Fiddlesticks may be one of the more niche style junglers, a lot of other carry junglers require this kind of jungling in order to actually be able to take control of games, and in doing so, control objectives and be everywhere on the map. And obviously I had to pick Fiddlesticks for this particular game because not only does he scale insanely well, you know, once you get going, he farms quickly, he has devastating positional ganks, he can dominate the mid game and late game team fights, basically any game that you let him scale enough and don't have enough vision control, Fiddlesticks could be around a corner with that game changing AoE ult. And of course this is a nice window into Fiddlesticks who is looking at a 53, almost 54% win rate currently on this current patch due to the most recent buffs. As such I do have two games to highlight, the first one actually had a perfect beginning for Fiddlesticks, he got super fed and I will show you if this does happen on a scaling jungler, on a Fiddlesticks jungler, how you can actually take over a game within 10 minutes and make sure you have the win. And then our second game looks at a more normal scenario where everything is equal and you actually have to be everywhere, help your feeding lanes and basically be the only difference maker in the game. Pretty much a standard rune set on Fiddlesticks at this point as you can see, the ultimate hunter has a very high usage rate, a stonky win rate, much better than relentless or anything else and the electric cube gives that early game damage and reliability that will be so useful in this particular game as well as the next one obviously from the scaling perspective you can take dark harvest you know it's nice you're a scarecrow harvest haha <laughs> but you can also take predator if you prefer the korean ganky ganky style however for ease of access and reliability i do still recommend the first two options now obviously in this case you have to look at lane states, what you can gank and where you can be opportunistic, but that's made difficult when enemy junglers, nautiluses and laners invade to try and steal your blue buff and herein is the power of Fiddlesticks specifically. Yes he starts on the red and raptors together, this is normally very good, it's quick, but it leaves you open to cheese and invades if you don't pull it off perfectly. In the event you know where the enemy is starting, in this case you're blue, it's very easy to simply get away with this. The thing is, after this there are two schools of thought. The Lee Sin either controls your entire blue side, controls his red side and then dominates the bottom lane, vertical jungling. You as Fiddlesticks will take his blue and have to worry about top side. This can be very good against farming junglers and scaling junglers because it distorts their ability to camp sequence and get really far ahead. But you know Lee Sins are kind of like jocks of the jungle, they just gotta do things to show dominance even if it doesn't make any sense. He goes straight to his blue buff directly, the Fiddlesticks anticipates this, has a nice invade, begins to get a suck onto the blue buff, outsmites the Lee Sin and now you've got an all out brawl between all laners and junglers on the top half of the map. The benefit of scaling junglers is they usually have some form of outplay ability. In the case of Fiddlesticks and his scaling, what happens is you just get your sucky suck on, you silence them as they engage on you and every time they think they got you dead, you live just a little bit longer and of course if you get the full channel of the W, you get the burst of healing which always takes laners by surprise ever since the rework. However in this situation as a carry jungler as Fiddlesticks, in Korea they're probably open, in the US they'd say open but not open and in NA they believe you could win until 50 minutes. The reality is if you find yourself in this situation, it is on you to actually use this lead. Control your bottom side jungle, have good pathing, you know the Lee Sin was last seen top side, he has a red buff to go get, he needs to get level 3, that means you have time to get the scuttle crab and yes your bottom lane does a good job on the bot side, however the mid lane is shoving very nicely, you've got LeBlanc which is one of the greatest laners to gank for, you know if she hits her ethereal chains, flash, fear, silence, sucky suck, chains, death, the circle of life with a fiddlesticks jungler. You think you're done? You're not, you clear your raptors, that's a second take by the way, that's important about this, it's the second spawn raptors extra experience. Top is also pushing, moving up and gank again, it's a very easy process of counter invading the blue buff, winning that 2v2 using your particular scaling champion kit, in this case the W on the fiddlesticks, transition that to controlling your own side of the jungle, make sure you pick up another gank in a pushing lane, start to do your second round of camp sequences, but if another lane is pushing, please take the opportunity to go up and gank it because they will not expect this kind of pressure nor a 4 no fiddlesticks before 5 minutes. Now to convert this lead into a game winning win condition, get the dragon. You know your fiddlesticks you just completed runic echoes in one buy. And this is why I love this game, it just was very unrealistic in terms of how he went about it. After the dragon gets another kill bottom lane, wastes the ult unfortunately, can go back to base and now reverse field. Remember the thing that's driving the fiddlesticks here is yes good camp sequencing, yes making sure those camps are cleared often, however it's also directly to the objectives. Looking for the gank on the top side, no one shows up, 
probably warded, go and do the Rift Herald, and now you can dive top lane. That's six kills, 64 CS, not even 10 minutes into the game, and you'll see a highlight of a few more kills around the next dragon. Do you see how easy it is as fiddlesticks once you have a lead to absolutely dominate? And that's the point of this video. Make sure you are at least neutral or have a lead as a hyper carry scaling jungler and again specifically as fiddlesticks now in this game what happens is there's a little bit of a throw and neutralization because of the enemy telia playing very very well and as such the fiddlesticks got his chance to use great team fights nice ultimates but the lead was never in question and the game was pretty much over but how then do we carry when one of our lanes is inting? How then do we carry when we don't have such a nice lucky start? Fortunately for you, instead of playing the game, I just spend my time watching VODs. My eyes cry at what I see half the time. But every now and then we have an excellent game and I'm glad to show you one right now. And yes, that's right. There is a secondary style of clear that Fiddlesticks can use. Obviously, you can have a leash and do what all junglers do. But you don't play Fiddlesticks to be like all junglers, do you? No, we're starting on the Wolves. This is so we can chain together the Blue and the Gromp, get them down very quickly, and then move on to the top side and chain the Raptors and the Red together. After that, you do the Krugs, you get level 4. Nunu has of course done the typical interior camp clear, and then gank top side. From there, Nunu's gonna do river things, Pepe on down the river and try and gank on your mid lane. So what you can do as Fiddlesticks in this case is reset, go straight to the Crab, look to gank bottom lane, maybe counter jungle the raptors if the Nunu shows on the top side, and once you've done that, your Grump should have spawned so you can then sequence Grump, Wolves, Raptors, Krugs, and be very close to level 6. All the Fiddlesticks can simply do a lane gank on the top side, waits for the Urgot to flash in, follows up, and a straightforward kill. Now obviously this is a challenger level jungler, and in such a high elo game, when you gank on the top side and the enemy team knows you started on the bottom side, the enemy jungler will always look to try and get some form of counter jungling done and interrupt your camp sequencing. It's very important that you defend your jungle and you actually rotate over. In this case, the bottom lane does shrub, but as you can see, the fiddlesticks did quite a good job handling himself anyway. And in your games, you might not have this kind of proactive rotation from your bottom lane, but the point is still that you can contest, deny, and prevent the counter jungling from occurring if you understand what the enemy jungler wants to do. And that's a big thing that a lot of junglers don't do, and that's consider what the enemy jungler wants to do. Most of you would simply walk into your jungle now expecting the Wolves and Grump, but they would have magically disappeared. And I don't know about you, but after these kinds of plays, I would love to go steal the Nunu's Raptors in kind. However, a big trend I've noticed, especially in higher Elis' mid lane, is actually thinking about taking other team's Raptors. And as a jungler, you know, this both pleases and disgusts me, because not only do I want to take the Raptors, if I'm the jungler having them stolen, it's pretty upsetting. Although it's made worse by the Nunu flashing into the wall, you know, just to show you that even if you are Challenger or Grandmaster, you can actually have Pepe hands on occasion. And now just watch the power of a scaling jungler when you have a lead, but specifically the 54% win rate fiddlesticks. You've got the huge soul suck where you literally open your entire essence and brain and basically just draw the juices from the enemy team. But at the same time, you're so disruptive with the silence, with the fear, with your sustain, especially when you get the full proc on the hill, as we said earlier. Yeah, he only gets a bunch of assists and this time didn't get the runic echoes in one buy, but that gives you total objective control. The thing is though, you still have to pay attention to the bottom lane. If they don't have prior, if they're neutral, if they're chunked, if they don't really want to rotate in that moment and the Nuno shows up around the wall, um, yeah, you, you know, you die and you lose the dragon at the same time. So. Please pay attention to these kinds of things, whether you're bronze or whether you're challenger. Now here's where the Fiddlesticks' pathing changes just a little bit. He knows the RNG Scuttle is spawning on the top side. However, you also know that the tier 3 Grump and tier 3 Wolves are spawning on the bottom side along with your blue buff. There's no real threat of a Herald on the map just yet, but given the Nunu was just on the bottom side, lost his Raptors, snuck away the Drake and killed you, you know he's going to be on the top side and then will want to sequence on down. Or at the very least be there if you use your ultimate on the bottom side for the 8 minute Herald. So in this case, use the prior your mid has and the fact that they're doing this in most low elo games will be pretty bad because they'll just die and make the wrong read, but you as the jungler can actually control the outcome by heading straight there, pick up the kill, get your crab, and then do what all fiddlesticks love to do, tower dive a pushing wave onto the enemy top lane, or bottom lane if you have sequenced that particular direction. The whole point is to use your ultimate power spike as soon as possible. Now remember, this game is filled with the fiddlesticks having the highest KP. The top laner did well and had a high kill participation, but the mid and bottom lane really weren't as involved in the game whatsoever. Just kind of running around looking like they were doing stuff, but not necessarily actually getting kills from it and that's where the fiddlesticks comes in. The whole goal is still objectives, get the herald, people are not focusing enough on that first herald, and now I'm not gonna call it Shelly, that name's ridiculous, you're a beastly gap in the void of space and time, and you're erupt and emerge, and you know, this giant beetle with an eye, I mean, Shelly, really? No, Rift Herald. 
or Duchess of the Void if you want. You also know that because you tower dive top lane and you killed Nuna on the top side, he's definitely going to sequence from the bottom side up into his blue. You have the global timer. Fill the time by doing Krugs and then setting up a counter gank, lane gank on the top side. We just talked about the top 10 commandments of ganking on the channel in this week's video. Go look at that. This is what we focus on a lot. And I talk about it in the coaching videos also on my other channel. Just that people know what they want to do, but they don't fill the time properly. They stand around, they waffle and they wait. This Fiddlesticks knows he can do the Krugs before the play can be made. Now if the Nunu doesn't show up quickly and you actually have great positioning, feel free to use your ultimate. Just be aware that you may be counter ganked. In that situation, you can actually show Vladimir that there is a champion who sucks more than he does. And just when you thought the Fiddlesticks had it all with his mid laner roaming, the Lissandra also shows up and guess what, they take care of that business as well. Now because of this delayed showing on the top side, you will give up the Dragon Spawn on the bottom side. Nunu has control of that, so the win condition for the blue team is still the Dragon Soul. However, you are now 5-1-5, you have such a lead as Fiddlesticks. This is where you need to start taking over the game because obviously, yeah, you have a lead, but you are down two Dragons to zero. You mid and bot aren't exactly that far ahead. And Fiddlesticks has elevated the game state with the Urgot such that they're not going to run. So you need to go set traps, get your FPGs down, and use your ultimate to dominate skirmishes and teamfights. Way too often in this situation, a jungler will go and sequence their full side, full clear, and the game will move on without them. Remember, as soon as you herald take and as soon as you push the top side, you've changed the nature of the game. You are now officially entering the mid-game zone. You cannot afford to AFK farm and leave your team alone. And if you weren't exactly sure about the power spike of Fiddlesticks, let me show you what a mid ult does. Let me show you again. That's what a 53% win rate does for you. But that they're in is the point of a hyperscaling dangerous jungler. If Rengar can do this and Evelyn can do this. The thing with Evelyn is you can't really see her on the map, right? You don't always know where she is. She's a big question mark. Fiddlesticks, you can be seen, which is why you need to use your effigies to clear vision. You need to use control wards. And of course, you have the added options of posing and trickery and things like that in bushes. In the first example, there was more focus on putting five points in W, making sure all the camps can be taken quickly so that in these fights, you could actually take them out because you had such a big lead, obviously rushing the void stuff as well. In this game, that hasn't been the case. And so three points into W into maxing Q so that you can have the sustained fear while you do the sucky McSuck is the better option. It's also okay to let people die and make sure you get another objective in the process, whether that's clearing your camps and getting a further lead or just simply warding. Usually dying in the situation with the kind of shutdown isn't what you're looking for. The reason for that also is that the second Rift Herald spawn is coming up and the RNG crab is on the top side. So now while he's on the bottom half of the map, Nuno of course is on the other side. Nevertheless, usually in these periods of the game, you have a bit of farming and sequencing, regaining control. It is however important you start to shove up, especially seeing as mid and top tower are down and bottom lane seems to be stuck in this neutral stalemate. They're on an island in this game. If someone is isolated, if they're by themselves, make the pick. And really, there's nothing better than beating a Vladimir when you're down two levels because he's going for a lazy back. Translate that into another Rift Herald and then sequence him down to the Dragon. However, it happens again, be very careful about the Nunu. He just has Consume Smite. He's willing to in for it. So you might get the Dragon because of this play, but of course you lost the Rift Herald. And from this point on, the Fiddlesticks basically continues to take over. Ult over the wall after the Dragon Pit, another kill. Keeps putting down effigies, keeps putting down different wards. Uses that ultimate Hunter, which is now max stack, to ensure that the ults are hitting their targets, taking out people, and basically dominating any skirmish that erupts. And I want you to pay attention to the position of the assassinations, to the position of the Fiddlesticks when going in for the flanking teamfight ults. This gives Baron, this gives the win condition. The lead is insurmountable at this point. 83% kill participation. Yes, he had a little bit of help from his laners, but overall the Fiddlesticks dominated the game, took it over, and basically only lost a dragon and a herald because Nunu pressed Q. So there you have it, two very different examples. One, when you are gifted a beautiful start, make sure you keep that pressure up actively. Using it in lanes and then objectives is better than AFK farming, hence the early void stuff, and hence a lot of the PvP nature of the game. If you have a more neutral game, make sure you take opportunistic lane ganks where appropriate, Make sure you protect your jungle when you know you're going to be counter jungled. Use the ultimate to perfection. Don't go for cheap throws. And of course, as Fiddlesticks have good vision control and unique angles of approach, such that Fiddlesticks actually sends terror into the souls of the enemy team. And I think with the win rate, he's kind of looking to do that on certain servers. So just a little bit of a lighter form gameplay to give you an example of how to use this champion and hyperscaling junglers to ultimately 1v9 and carry your games. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share and comment if you did. It gives my beard a little bit of oomph in its growth because it can sense that 1500 like mark. Hint, hint. Don't forget to sub for the volley guide coming very soon, as well as additional jungling tips and all sorts of other jungling foresty things. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.